Today I'm going to record a video about how to disarticulate fully clear and separate all the sclerites of a beetle. So this is the beetle I'm going to do. This is a uh, species called uh, Listernicus piliferus. This particular specimen is from uh, Texas. And uh, this is a, a darkling beetle. Uh, you can see it's a little dirty. This is actually an aliculine, a comb clawed beetle. Uh, if we zoom in, you can see that it has if I can get that there, pectinate claws on the tarsi. And um, what I want to do is be able to look inside, see all the parts of it, um, and, and be able to examine all of them uh, uniquely. And actually, I'm not going to disarticulate this specific specimen. I have another one here, which has been soaking in water for a few minutes. This is just warm distilled water. I can get it out. And so this one is damp, wet. And I did this to try to um, kind of just loosen it up and, and prevent things from, from breaking. Um, also, I want to be able to get this off of uh, the pin. And so now I should be able just very gently do that, drop it off, and I have some more distilled water down below. So now I have this specimen here in water. This is a, a flighted specimen. Um, it's not fully relaxed, but at least I can kind of manipulate it and probably not break too much of it. So what I'm actually gonna do uh, first is separate some of the major body segments. Can't quite see through the microscope with only one eye since the video's on, so I apologize for being clumsy. Um, so right there, I just separated the head and, and prothorax from uh, the rest, the, the pterothorax and the abdomen. Uh, the legs just kind of fell off there. I didn't do a very good job of relaxing this. So. When you're doing this, you kind of need to know how important and critical is this specimen that you're dissecting. If you break certain things, you'd probably want to relax it longer, treat it nicer. Um, I am not too worried about things like legs. I have other specimens of this. I'm also going to just rip the abdomen off there. Sometimes you can kind of get a pin or your forceps right in there and kind of separate the abdomen from the rest of it, right? And all the reproductive bits, and I'm interested in some defensive glands and things that are in under there. By separating these out a little bit, we just kind of increase the surface area um, for the clearing process. So I have a test tube here um, with some warm KOH, uh, uh, potassium hydroxide, and I'm gonna take my specimens, or bits of specimens at least, and put them into this test tube. I uh, probably don't have to put the legs in, but um, I'm going to anyway. Uh, yeah. All right, so now those are in there. Let's give it a little swirl and kind of make out that they're floating in here. This is a strong base. I'm gonna put it back in the warm water bath and we're gonna let that uh, sit for a few moments maybe about five. It really depends on how large your specimen is and how long um, you need to, to uh, clear it for. So now it's been uh, about five minutes or so. And in our uh, test tube, you can kind of see there's a little bit of uh, kind of brownish, yellowish color up top around the bits of the beetle. This is way more KOH than I needed. Um, but you can see that it's actually starting to dissolve some parts of the insect. And so uh, what else I have set up here? Um, I have a little uh, uh, glass jar of vinegar. Um, most, a lot of people use glacial acetic acid, same thing, acetic acid, um, to neutralize the action at the end. Uh, and I've swapped out under my microscope. I had a uh, larger watch glass, which is a bit big for this specimen. And so now under here, I have this spot plate, which has three, it's made out of glass, has three wells. And the first two here, I have some distilled water. And so um, 
we're going to now take this test tube and pull out the bits that have kind of been dissolving a little bit in KOH and put them here. Again, it's always important with specimens to have an idea of what are you actually looking for? What do you need? What, what do you not need? Um, and how do you kind of focus your efforts, your time uh, during this? So now here we have um, all of our bits kind of floating uh, in water. You can see that um, some stuff has happened. These membranes have loosened up. Uh, things are a bit more pliable. And if we kind of start shaking this out, kind of all of the, the fats and non-sclerotized, non-chitinous structures have started to be dissolved inside of these. And so that's good. Um, again, I'm after some bits in the abdomen here. This is very difficult with one eye in the scope. My dominant eye is currently going to the camera. But what I'm going to do is, is kind of rip off these turgites here from the abdomen a little bit, kind of opens it up. And most of what's in here, uh, right in this area, is all um, kind of mid and hind gut. Well, hind gut mostly. Um, and there's some trachea and some various reproductive bits that have been um, dissolved, and especially the fat bodies just really been dissolved by the KOH. And so I'm not sure that I want to go into this part here. It still seems a little um, not quite ready for my taste. I don't want to rip too many things. There's still a lot of trachea, which kind of wrap around everything. And so I don't want to accidentally tear all of the bits in there. So I'm gonna put this back in for a little bit. And water is of course not the best thing to view um, samples in, but it's the best way to kind of rinse these out and then put that back into the KOH. My kind of thorax with elytra here, if I can turn this upside down. Now we can see these wings kind of stretching out the hind wings. The elytra are a bit more pliable, which is good. You can see the hole from the pin there. And if I can tilt this over, you can see in here the metendosternite is this Y-shaped structure at the back there. It's kind of standing up. Um, you see there's still a lot of muscle and, and stuff that's not quite all the way dissolved. There's the tergum of the, of the pterothorax in there. But what I'm going to do is take a pipette here and just kind of pump a little bit of this water through there and kind of dislodge some of this mostly or partially dissolved tissue. And it looks a lot better. I'm going to throw that also back into the KOH just for another minute or two. If you're really interested in wing mounts, this might be a good time to pull the wing out. It, it doesn't dissolve for quite a while, but um, if you really want to see the veins and be able to move it, um, this is good. But you can still do that later, again, depending on what your primary focus is. Now, um, all these bits of legs, which I was a little rough with. I'm not going to bother clearing them anymore. I'm just going to try to get the bit of tissue off and then I've just moved them up to this next kind of clear section of water. Now here, oh, that one. Here we have the uh, prothorax and the head. I'm just going to kind of zoom in a little bit here. Um, I'm actually interested also in the mouth parts and some bits. Again, it depends on what you're interested in. If you're interested in cervical sclerites, you're going to be real um, careful maybe up here. I'm not 
So I'm just going to kind of separate the head out. And this is looking pretty good. There are a few uh, apophyses. You can't probably quite make it out on the video. They're inside the um, um, inside the prothorax. Um, that I'm just going to clear a bit more. And the head. The head is difficult because there's a lot of endocranial structures um, that 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 come in here from the gula. And but I also want to get the mouth parts. And if the mouth parts get too soft, they kind of tear when you try to take them out. So what I think I'm gonna do is after moving it here to a little bit clearer water. Um, I want to get the mouth parts out. So you can either come in with a pin at the base of the mandible, or if they're not too soft yet, you can just kind of flex it all the way back and pull it out. So there's one, and you can kind of see the, the condyles on the, right, the muscle, the, the, kind, um, the tendon attachments there. And I'll try to do the same with this other side without doing too much. I uh, kind of have dislocated that maxilla, which is okay. I'm actually going to get a pin here for this. What I'm going to try to do, which might be glare right over it, is kind of come in at the base of the maxilla here. Just kind of push in and out. See if I can just kind of dislodge it without losing too much of. So here we have the mentum, the all of the uh, the labium here, kind of coming out with uh, one of the uh, maxillae attached, and and this all of this structure coming out with it that's membranous is the uh, hypopharynx, right? The, the food canal, the alimentary canal that goes from the head. We have the other maxilla still attached. And on the top, I'm gonna to pull out the labrum there, if I can, and it doesn't wanna quite come out. Well, I'm just gonna dislodge the rest of these mouth parts from the head and put the head capsule back into KOH. After leaving it in the KOH for another oh, about two or three minutes, I've pulled everything out. And um, this time I've put a piece of white paper underneath uh, the spot plate. And so that really helps with the camera picking up um, stuff for recording. I tend to like the black background because it doesn't push as much light to my eyes and I feel like it doesn't strain me as much. Um, but that's gonna be personal preference while you do this. So here we have floating in water. I replaced the water and I, I've already kind of used the pipette to, to push them around a little bit. We have our main bits, our, our head here that still has um, the maxilla and the uh, Labrum is still attached there as well, one of the antennae. We have our thorax with the wings and elytra, our prothorax, and we have our abdomen. Now what I'm gonna do at this stage is transfer all of these into uh, the vinegar that we had here, which is going to neutralize the base, the uh, potassium hydroxide, which was used to kind of clear out um, all of kind of the fatty tissues there. And I'm going to get rid of this dirty water. And because I don't want the vinegar necessarily to persist, um, I'm going to rinse it in water after I'm done. There's nothing wrong with leaving it in here for um, say five minutes or 10 minutes. I tend to be a little lazy and not leave it very long. Uh, I also didn't super overly clear a lot of this. Um, so at least for today's demonstration, I'm just gonna kind of rinse it in there. 
I'm gonna pull it back out and put it in distilled water. Just for a moment. Okay. I'm fairly happy with these. I can kind of see through and I know that for my purposes, I'm gonna be able to see all of the parts that I want. So after I just kind of rinse this in water to kind of dilute and get rid of the bits of, um, of vinegar that are there, I'm actually now going to transfer this into ethanol, which has better optical properties, of course, is good for preserving them long term. Um, but that's what I prefer to then work with the specimens in. Also, after they've been in water, if you put them in ethanol, they'll uh, sink to the bottom, which is convenient. So now I have these specimens here in ethanol. Um, and from here, I can go ahead and study whatever features I'm interested in, I can continue to disarticulate these. Um, I actually will uh, typically take them apart a good bit more from here. Uh, for instance, on this thorax, um, I'm going to take apart the elytra off of the rest of this. Uh, and you can kind of see it's kind of takes the rest of the the um, mesonotum with it, that's kind of okay. You kind of want to, again, depends on what you are trying to study. Um, and I tore a little bit on the sides, but what I ended up here with are the two elytra, the two flight wings. And then this is the, um, the meso and metanota here. Right, the scutellar shield or the scutellum, the whole top piece. Um, and then here with all these muscle attachments, um, uh, thickenings, ridges on the um, metanotum. And then we have a wing, which is a bit uh, harder to see with that much light, but you have a nice wing prep there that you could uh, illustrate all of the veins from. You could take pictures of, you could slide mount it or mount it on a on a card um, and so forth. So I'm happy with this. Uh, I'm not that interested in these parts. So I'm just gonna go ahead for now and move this to my uh, completed side where the rest of the mouth parts are. Um, for me, there's not too much here in the uh, pronotum that I'm or interested in and the prothorax can kind of uh, maybe make out in there. There are prothoracic apophyses, these invaginations of the cuticle that uh, serve for muscle attachment of the legs. Those could be important in some groups. Um, the other important thing, which actually I will look at here, um, is whether or not the coxal cavities are closed. So I'm going to just hold the, the prothorax down and come up, since I've already broken off this leg, I'm going to just try to grab this coxa and pull it out. And there it is with the internal bits. And if I rotate this, there's a bubble there, of course. Just going to use the pipette to flush that out. And here we can look and see that these coxal cavities, they're closed outside by this cuticular thickening coming across and meeting the um, prosternal process. Externally, but we could have examined that without disarticulating it. But inside here, um, we can see that there is this also closure here behind it that's completely, that goes from the front of the coxal cavity to the back. So internally, there's an entire closure of this cavity. So that's important that these coxal cavities are closed internally and externally. 
Of course, that may not be relevant if you're looking at species within a genus, but probably relevant if you're looking at higher level groupings within a family, perhaps. I'm gonna move that aside. Um, I could save this uh, coxa, even though be a good chance I won't remember which one's which, still I can save it. Um, the head is pretty well cleared. You can see the eyes. You can still see there's one maxilla. We can see where this antennal um, insertion is concealed on this beetle underneath that frontal ridge. Um, and also, if I'm able to manipulate it in this drawer, again, a lot of times for imaging or for manipulation, you'll put it into glycerin or something else. Um, but you can look in there and see the um, tentorium and the tentor whether or not there's a tentorial bridge um, that, that, that these um, gular apophyses are connected in the middle of the head or not. And so you can see all of those structures. You can see um, inside at the underside of the cranium and look at a number of things there. And finally, we have the two bits I'm a little bit more interested in personally for, for my research purposes. So here's our pterothorax, our, our meso and metathorax. You can turn this upside down, or sorry, right side up. And if we look at this, there's a, there are a few bits of vinegar at the top of this alcohol that aren't quite mixing. I'll try to get rid of that. Okay, so here we can see, if we look closely, this is the met endosternite. We have our hind coxy here that are kind of transverse. Um, and in the middle, we have this invagination right here and into this wishbone shaped Y structure. Um, and it's important to notice whether or not um, uh, there are laminae, like these kind of um, flattened, thickened structural support ridges underneath the sides of this is called the furca. These are the furci together, plural, that come off of the stalk, the median stalk here. Whether there's a lamina, these are kind of recurved. Is there a muscle attachment, like a flattening here? Um, what's the general shape? So this sticks up and into the body, has muscles that come down here into the um, into the coxy, two of them, and a pair that run forward and a pair that run up to the notum for uh, flight. We can also see in this beetle that the uh, meta meso uh, mesendosternite or mesosternal apophyses. Um, there's oftentimes a little bit of kind of tissue and and membrane, especially from my kind of rough pairing that I did that just kind of persists and you can try to get in and get rid of some of that to clear it up. But here we can see on this, um, again, if you're gonna put this in publication, you'd probably try to stain this to show, but we have the mesocoxal cavities. We have this, this rod here that comes up and then laterally towards the side. This, these are the um, mesosternal apophyses that come up. It's usually, they're usually paired here. And again, they do the same thing. They have muscle attachment for these um, middle legs and, and then up towards the elytra. Uh, we can also um, just see how the internal coxal cavities are closed in here. Um, and we can look at the sclerites here on the outside, even though we probably could have seen this on a, the pin specimen earlier, we could not have seen these internal skeletal features. So um, I'm satisfied with this. I, I know the shape of the metendosternite and of the mesosternal apophyses, and I will move that to my completed section. But now I'm interested in this, the abdomen. Now this is gonna be different depending on whether you have a male or a female, uh, what group you're working on, what it looks like, what segments are involved and all sorts of stuff. So typically these first ventrites are not that interesting or, or, or informative. Again, your group may vary. And oftentimes these 
pergites are not very well uh, differentiated. You can see here's the first abdominal um, uh, uh, spiracle, and you can count uh, if you were so interested the spiracles there in that membrane to identify each of the segments. For my purposes, I, I know that the ventrites are well mapped out in this family, so I'm not particularly worried about that. So I'm going to carefully try to move a bunch of this out of the way. And here's where, I, for me, I have to be careful. Um, you might be able to see, this is the, the gut that leads to the anus here. Um, and there's also uh, a pair of defensive glands. And this is a female, this is the uh, female external tract. And so I'm going to um, need to shift back to two eyes to kind of be able to uh, deal with this. So here we have the abdomen, which I've uh, done a little bit more work to. I've used my fine tip forceps and a pin. So these are the abdominal ventrites here. We can see the, the posterior um, metacoxal kind of cowling. The, these enclose the coxae on the inside. This is our first visible ventrite, two, three, four. There was a fifth ventrite here, which has been removed. And in fact, um, what I did was um, you can sort of see here that there are a bunch of membranes. These are the, the tergites. These are the ventrites. So I ripped the tergites off. Here are the ventrites. But this final segment I ripped off with all of the terminalia. I separated it from the rest of the abdomen. And if we zoom in, I have the tergite, right? The, the dorsal bit here that I've kind of ripped a little bit. Um, there's not much interesting in this for, for the group I'm looking at. This is kind of rounded with CD sticking off of it. And this is um, the ventrite. So this usually has this, the reproductive bits. So we, have, we still have the, the terminal bit of the hindgut coming in here to the anus. And this is the ovipositor. These are the paraprocs that need to stick out. You can kind of see these two little um, gonostyle or the, the coccites of the ovipositor when this everts. And then this is the eighth segment here, which was sandwiched between this top and bottom piece of the eighth uh, segment. And I've done a pretty poor job of this, uh, but you might just be able to make out here that there are a pair here of sacs, one here, and there's one here underneath this membrane. These are the defensive glands, which actually open in this um, membranous portion that connects the eighth to the ninth um, uh, uh, segments, or sorry, seventh to the eighth segments. So um, that's what I wanted to get in and do. I would need to stain these to image them. This might still take a little more work to kind of grab and pull and, and evert out um, these bits. But um, already I can see that it's a long ovipositor. And if I'm able to turn this over, there's the, um, and it turned over twice. But underneath you can sort of see the apodine, the spiculum uh, ventral. Come on, there we go, maybe. Right, so kind of underneath there, we have the spiculum ventral. This doesn't want to stay where I want it to stay, which is a pretty common occurrence. Uh, but you can start to see a little bit more structure there of the ovipositor. Um, and you could further disarticulate these sclerites. For me, this is usually about as much disarticulation as I do. And I put all of these um, things into my final set of, uh, of kind of ethanol preserved 
fits. Come on. And actually, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, if I turn this back over without the white sheet below, you can actually kind of make out those defensive lands a little bit uh, better. But again, it takes some, some uh, processing uh, to be ready for imaging, but at least here I can investigate and see them and kind of um, assess the morphology for myself at least. Pull those bits off. And now from here, I'm um, next going to just transfer all of these to glycerin and store them, digitize my specimen so I know where it's from, what species it is, um, and where in my collection I placed it. Thanks for watching.